In this corner, weighing in at 174 billion parameters, or maybe more, or maybe less, it's ChatGPT from OpenAI. And in this corner, weighing in at 4,398 pounds, it's Full Self Driving from Tesla. Tonight, we find out which one gets to AGI first. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. This is a completely speculative episode in which I actually pit large language models against full self-driving, which includes both the car and the Optimus bot in the ring together to see which one has the best chance of getting to artificial general intelligence or AGI first. So first of all, I am completely convinced that neither of these is anywhere close to it in their current iterations. So the real question here is which one has the best path towards AGI or perhaps the worst path? If you you don't want to get a computer with artificial general intelligence, then maybe you don't want this to happen. But in any case, let's take a look at what the advantages and disadvantages of each of these models is and which one has the more likely path towards getting to AGI first. So to begin with, let's take large language models, again, the poster child of which is OpenAI's ChatGPT. Also, there are LLMs by Meta and by Google and by a bunch of startup companies and on and on and on. So there are a ton of them out there, but the basic idea behind this is a kind of an autocomplete thing where the neural network architecture has been trained on a gigantic corpus of text. And of course, they're starting to train on images and things like that as well. And so the basic objective of these LLMs is to see some words that's an input like, hey, can you tell me about how to bake a cake? Give me a recipe or something, or, or give me five re recipes to bake a cake. Anyway, you take that input and you, you start to predict what the next word is and what the next word is and what the next word is. It sounds very, very simple, but what happens is in order to do a good job of this and in order to be aligned with human desires, there are a lot of steps involved. There are, again, like I said in the intro, GPT 3.5 has about 174, 175 billion parameters. Nobody knows exactly how many parameters GPT-4 has because OpenAI won't tell us. But anyway, you know, there's a lot of other ones too. There's 7 billion parameter models, 65 billion parameter models, trillion parameter models. They are all over the place. But basically all of these parameters are being used to figure out what humans want. That's the, the basic alignment here. So the, the word completion part is relatively simple. I mean, Siri and other things have been doing this for years. But to get something more sophisticated than just predicting the next couple of words, it takes a ton of of work and also a lot of alignment again alignment meaning that these things don't just answer some word they actually answer the word that we want and the way that's being done currently is reinforcement learning through human feedback which means that humans give the output of large language models a thumbs up or a thumbs down and they tell it whether they think it did a good job or not so anyway that's the basics of this and when people start talking about a path for large language models to get to artificial general intelligence what they mean is that it has to have a kind of a knowledge knowledge of language and language is a knowledge of behavior and of thinking and all of that. So that is the path that it would take to AGI because humans, there's an argument to be made that we are linguistic creatures and that our, you know, drive towards consciousness and understanding and all of that is based on our acquisition of language as we're little babies. And now let's take Tesla's vision system inhabited by full self-driving beta, but also being used in the Optimus Tesla bot. You know, it's, it's, it's both of these things things. So I'm going to kind of combine them into one thing because in terms of a path towards AGI, they're essentially the same. What they are doing is they are taking an input, which is, for example, with a car, that's the easier one to think about. It's like, I want to go from my house to the grocery store and Google, you know, projects a map. So it doesn't do that part. But then once you leave the driveway, once it actually has a destination, the car has to look around the world, has to figure out what's going on in the world, and it has to navigate through the world. So it has to not hit things. It has to have an understanding of how other vehicles, pedestrians, dogs, cats, whatever, any of the things that could potentially be in a road could interact with it. So it really has to have a great deal of understanding about the world in order to navigate through it. It seems like a relatively simple task, but again, just like language that we pick up as babies and we're like, yeah, yeah, no big deal to speak English or something. Well, if somebody starts speaking Mandarin Chinese to me, I'm going to just, you know, look at them <laughs> like I have no idea what you're saying. So it's not an easy task. And this is one of those kinds of things where you think driving is a relatively easy task 
task. But if you took someone who had been, you know, born on a desert island and had never seen a car before or a road, they would have a very, very hard time driving. They would have no real concept of how to do that. And of course, they already have the advantage of having grown up and understood how their body works and having how to navigate through space. But even with that, they wouldn't have a real clear sense of how to navigate in a road system. What lights mean? I mean, what does a red light mean to somebody who's, you know, never seen a red light before? So all of that kind of stuff, they would probably do a really, really bad job of driving and it would take them a long time to figure out how. So these things are much more complicated when you start peeling back the layers of the onion than you at first assume. And of course, then you take Optimus, which is a humanoid type of robot, and that has to navigate through an environment that's very much a human one as well. And that could be walking through paths and understanding what a building is and what an object is and what all of these other things, what a sidewalk is to, you know, a place that it is safe for it to walk. So all of those things have to be taken account of in order for these robots to operate, in order for the software to function properly in the world. So what is full self-driving, again, for both the car and the Optimus robot? What is its path to AGI? Its path to AGI is to understand the world, the physical world, in a concrete enough way that it has a sense of the humans and the other animals that inhabit it. And that requires a degree of consciousness. There's a sense in which you have to understand the world around you and you have to be able to project consciousness onto other humans and onto animals and other things like that into the world in order to drive. When you get to certain types of intersections, you don't know who needs to go first or something and somebody might wave you on and that gives you an indication that it's okay to go. With a robot, there might be a situation where you, you know, that, that kind of thing in the street where you bump into somebody, you're walking and you both kind of go left and then you go right and you're like, Ugh, you don't know which way to go and you have to negotiate that sort of thing. These are just small moments, but they are areas where you have to project a sense of consciousness and agency into another entity and understand what they're thinking in order to resolve those situations. And of course, when you get to that point, that means that you have to have a model of mind and a model of mind is what many people consider to be a consciousness. All right, so there's the two contenders. Before we actually pit them head to head, one thing that's important to understand is what in the world is AGI? And I think that there are two different things that people mean when they're talking about artificial general intelligence. One of them is just something that does a lot of tasks well. And you can make a pretty convincing argument that large language models like ChatGPT are already starting to do this. They're not trained on anything specific to a task like doing programming or something. They just have ingested a lot of programming so they're able to regurgitate that if need be in a creative way they're not just copy pasting or anything like that so you could say that that's a, that's a pretty generalized intelligence that it can write some code it can then take that and can turn it into a bedtime story it can then turn it into song lyrics you know it can do very very different things even though it hasn't been trained specifically to do that so you can make an argument that it's already a pretty generalized intelligence what about tesla's full self driving slash optimus for full self driving specifically you can say it's relatively narrow because you're just driving down roads. But in order to do that, it takes an awful lot of comprehension of things. There's a lot of tasks which are much more general than you might think. So you might think this is just specific AI because all it's doing is pressing an accelerator, a brake pedal, and turning a wheel. But in order to do that, it has to have a pretty general understanding of the natural world around us. And of course, for Optimus, it has to interact with humans on an even more intimate level since it's you know interacting kind of one-on-one -on -one rather than car to car. But anyway, you can make a reasonable argument that artificial general intelligence-wise, that Tesla full self-driving slash Optimus is not in the same ballpark as the large language models. And so you could say to yourself, okay, I think large language models are winning this battle at this point. But then we get to definition number two of AGI and what I call artificially intelligent agency. And that is a form of consciousness. And remember when I was talking about full self-driving, I was talking about that. And with large language models, I was talking about that as well. The idea that you have to have an understanding, a theory of mind, a way of projecting something onto other entities in order to have that type of consciousness. The thing that we humans pride ourselves in, right? That we, we know about ourselves. We have self-awareness, we have awareness of others, that kind of thing. That's a whole different ballpark. And both full self-driving slash optimist and large language models are still a good deal away from that, but you can begin to see the inklings of how they're going to get to that point. Large language models, of course, taking the linguistic aspect and saying like, okay, in order to have consciousness, we have 
have to have language. We have to have an understanding of the world. We have to have an ability to be able to conceive of things and to think about the other person. You might have heard, for example, that when you do speeches or something like that, it's like know your audience before you write the speech. That sort of idea, and that's something that LLMs have within them already because of the alignment. They have a sense, like when you type in, can you please tell me these sorts of things, it has a generalized sense of who you are. It doesn't know you exactly, but it does have a generalized sense of this is a human being. I need to orient my answers towards human beings. If, you know, if orcas train them or something like that, then yeah, they'd probably have different responses. But at least for humans, they have a pretty good sense of that. As for the cars, the way that the cars drive and the way Optimus will interact with the world requires alignment with the way that humans think and drive, right? So it being in the car, you of course want the car to be comfortable and not scary. You don't wanted to be jerking to a stop and a start and going back and forth across the road, terrifying for you as a passenger in the car. And, and for the other people around you as well, you want the car to behave in a human manner. You want the people to have a sense of how the car should behave and it should behave like that. So, you know, you come to a yellow light and you slow down and do a stop. You get the green light, you, you accelerate away. You come to a stop sign, you pause briefly and then you move on, you know, that kind of a thing, right? There's an expectation of how other humans will drive. And if you don't drive that way, it's very, very confusing. So even though it's not linguistic, the car has to be able to behave in the world. And of course, Optimus will have to do that as well. And of course, for me, the more interesting of these two questions is artificially intelligent agency or the second definition of AGI. For that, let's take a look at LLMs. LLMs, like I said, have to have a theory of mind. They have to have an understanding of another entity. Currently, maybe they do. They might have the beginning inklings of that sort of a thing going on because they're trained to make humans happy. Now, they're also trained in a very small little weird box because they know everything on the internet, but they also know nothing about the real world except for the way that people discuss that. On the other hand, you've got full self-driving. And again, I'm just going to include Optimus with this. So just <laughs> assume parenthetically Optimus is in there, but you know, Optimus is not nearly as advanced or far along as full self-driving. So let's just discuss full self-driving here. Full self-driving, as opposed to linguistically inhabiting the world, has to inhabit the physical world and has to move throughout it. So it's kind of the two aspects of a human. You've got large language models over here that is the whole language aspect of humans. And then you've got the whole moving through space being a physical entity part that is full self-driving. And in order to move through space and do it effectively in a way that humans understand and that make us comfortable, that requires a great deal of, again, theory of mind on the computer's part, it may be less obvious for full self-driving because you don't have, you know, language. It's not talking to you. And when things talk, we have a sense that they are much smarter than they necessarily are. And I'm not saying that LLMs are not smart, but I'm saying that that's the way that we communicate with each other. So you're like, oh, that thing is smart. When something moves through the world, you know, you like a cheetah or something, you could say, wow, that cheetah is beautiful. It moves beautifully through the world. You don't necessarily say it's a conscious creature, but you do probably give it some sense of agency. I think a cheetah has a sense that it is an entity and its body ends at a certain point and it feels hunger and it wants to go get food and it wants to sleep. And, and you know, it's, it's like there's a basic sense that even something that is not as high up as humans on the consciousness scale has a sense of self and is able to project onto the minds of others. In order to hunt, a cheetah has to understand what its prey is probably going to do because if it fails to do that, it's not going to catch the prey and then it's not going to eat. So in a really cool way, we've got both parts of being a human. We've got linguistic and we've got physical. And these two things are hanging out like this right now. The interesting part to me and the reason why I'm giving it away right now, I think that full self-driving will ultimately win this battle to AGI is that full self-driving already has some of the large language model techniques within it. For example, creating the grammar of lanes. And if you haven't seen that video, you can check that out if you're interested. But anyway, Tesla is already using large language model techniques within Tesla's full self-driving, probably more than we even know at this point because it's been months since AI day number two. But the really interesting part is that I would assume that they're going to layer large language model on top of Tesla's full self-driving and certainly Optimus. I mean, the best way to interact with a robotic humanoid is to be able to talk to it. So that would be kind of dumb if they don't just include one of these open source large language models or train one themselves or something along those lines. 
And of course, what that means is that Tesla's full self-driving is going to have a bit of a cheat code in terms of getting to AGI, which is that you've already got the physical aspect, which large language models are missing, but there is a very, very clear and direct path for attaching large language models on the front end and even potentially internally, as they're already doing, with full self-driving. And when they do that, you've got both halves. You've got the linguistic or mental half, and you've got the physical half. And both of these things together is what makes human beings and what's makes us conscious and what gives us a sense of self and a theory of mind for others and all of that kind of stuff. So I would come down on the side of full self-driving again slash Optimus being the strategy that gets to artificially intelligent agency first. Now, is that a good thing or not? I, you know, that's a little bit scary when you get something that's artificially intelligent and has an agency, has a sense of self. That means that it, you know, it wants to do things or it doesn't want to do things. And you eventually will have to negotiate with this entity in order to get it to do what you want. Now, hopefully we can align things in a way that it stays desiring what humans desire, but that is not necessarily going to be the case. And here's the ironic twist at the end of this. Elon Musk was one of the co-signers on that open letter that said we should put a pause on AI training right now for at least six months so that everybody can take a breath and figure things out. Well, as far as I can see, and again, this is totally speculation because I'm looking into the future, but as far as I can see, full self-driving is the thing that is most likely to get to artificially intelligent agency first before these large language models because it has access to the physical world. And in order to inhabit and move through and understand the physical physical world, it has to have a whole separate set of tools, conscious tools, things that rise to consciousness that large language models don't even have at this point. LLMs are basically brains in vats. They're just getting information, but they have no real way of interacting or understanding the world outside of them. So again, in short, because full self-driving will be able to glom on large language models on top of what they already have, I think they have the clearest path to getting to AGI first. Whether or not that's a good thing, I don't know. And whether or not Tesla should take a look in the mirror and think about whether they should pause things, I personally do not think they should pause things. I think they should keep moving ahead. But anyway, whether they should do that, perhaps what they should do is think about the way that the large language model is going to be attached to the rest of FST. And maybe they shouldn't give it complete access to everything all at once. Maybe they should keep them a little bit separated. And that might give them a good way of slowing things down just a little bit to make sure nothing gets completely out of control. Anyway, that's what I think. Like I said, complete speculation. I would love to know what you all think in the comments. I know this is a crazy idea, but I don't think we're that far away from these AI entities at least telling us that they have agency. Whether they do or not, that's a hard thing to say. But if you tell me you have agency and I tell you I have agency, we just have to trust each other. <laughs> There's a point at which you just don't know. Even for humans, we don't know that other people are conscious. The universe could be solipsistic and we could be all alone and there's just, you know, everything's being constructed around us and we are the only conscious entities and everything else is an NPC. That is a possibility. I don't think that's likely. But anyway, that does mean that in order to not believe something like that, we have to trust other entities when they tell us they're conscious. And eventually we are probably going to interact with a car or with a robot or with a large language model on your computer or your phone or something that's going to tell you it's conscious. And eventually we're not going to be able to disprove that. And we will probably have to accept that as a realistic possibility. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting and thought provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon, my YouTube channel members, and soon my Twitter subscribers. Thank you all so much for supporting me in any and all of the ways that you're able to. And of course, if you want to join any of the teams, just check out the links in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have TeslaBot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you want to go shopping for a car, a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon, just check out the links in the description. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.